I turned this a year or so ago, and I, I've never really been happy with it. Uh, I turned a logo in, I mean, a spot for my logo in the bottom. Gave it a little bit of a foot, but not much. And and I've just, I wanted to try to save as much of this as I could because I thought it looked cool. But it's just, it's just a big clunky piece of wood that has a little cove cut out of it, and it's, it's just, it's, it's not very aesthetically pleasing. I mean, I love the look of the spalting in this. It's spalted maple. It's got some beautiful grain to it, but it, it almost went too far. It's relatively punky. But like I said, I just, I really, I've never been really, really been happy with it. I'll put a link to that video up here so you can go watch it if you want to. And I'm going to put this back on the lathe and I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's, it is a crotch piece. You can see an, another limb. The main trunk of the tree was this way or the limb was this way. This was a big maple limb, about 10 inches in diameter, maybe 12. And another limb was coming off like this. So I am going to put it on the lathe pretty much like this, with this being the flat part. I'm going to turn this down some to make the, the foot of the bowl if I can and, and then I will. Anyway, we'll do something. I, I want to make it nicer than it is. So come along with me and watch me either completely destroy it or make something prettier. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. I'm going to start by taking some of this off. I've set this up so that this, these three corners are pretty much the same. So I'm going to start by taking some of this off down here and we'll see where we go from there. We're going to have a lot of chip out on this for a little while. find it and if it's salvageable then I'll come back. <clears throat> okay I've got this glued back together and well, I used wood glue and then I just filled the crack with black CA because it should almost mimic the black spalt lines in this spalt of maple. So now what I'm going to do, I came over to this lathe because the paramatic is busy and let me get my face shield on and get my tool and see what we can do. I want to get this flat enough to make it thinner.
Okay. I don't want to go too far out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make me a mark right here on my tool wrist showing where I'm going to hollow. That's too far. I don't want to go past right there. Okay, I've got my face shield on. Gonna get rid of the tail stop. Not there yet. A little bit more. I'm getting down there. Not quite there yet. So close. Yeah, I've still got a little more to go right here because I need to come out. But that's looking pretty good. And then uh, a little bit of a rise. That's smooth enough. I've just got to come out a little bit more. That's just nearly there. I mean, it is so close. I didn't want to do that, but that's okay. The rest of this I'm just going to sand. But because of this tear out, I want to stiffen these fibers up with shellac. let this dry while I'll come back. Taking it to 600. Alright, that's 600. Put some sanding sealer in it and see what it looks like. Mylans. I really want to work on the back of this. Um, I don't want to get too carried away. Face shield on. See, I'm about to mess it up. I didn't. Not really. Okay, I'll do all of the sanding of the back off of the lathe and over at the workbench because it's that's just what it's going to take. Because there's no way with the hit or miss with these wings I'm going to be able to do this back with it on the lathe. But that's okay. So I'll show you a little bit of how that's going to go and when I'm ready to do something else, I'll come back. I'm going to apply some axe abrasive paste to the inside of this bowl. Get 
Not bad, not bad at all. Now some polish and restoring paste. Let that set up for a minute. And we'll buff it out. I'll take it out of the chuck and I'll sand up the bottom before we do any finishing on this. I'm much happier with this now than I was before. I think it's going to look really cool. Okay, I've got my air cleaner going. I have my dust extractor right here. I'm going to use my orbital sander and sand the back of this and probably move the sides again just to smooth them up some and get them ready for finish. So there's going to be a whole lot of this. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a lot of that through 400 grit. And then I will come back and we will... I think what I'm going to do, once I get this all sanded up, I'm going to chuck it back up. I'm going to polish the inside of this with Hampshire Sheen to give it a little better gloss. And then once that hardens up, I'll turn it over vacuum chuck it and work on the bottom. Drill my recess for my logo and, and finish shaping and sanding this. Anyway, so I'm going to be sanding for a while. Okay, first thing I want to do, I've got this mounted on my vacuum chuck and it's running relatively true here because I attached it with this in my tailstock before I turn the vacuum on. So I want to drill my recess for my logo coin. That's plenty deep because I'm going to hollow that out some. I want to be relatively gentle with this. Actually I want to be very gentle with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this off. I'm going to blend this in here as best I can. And then I want to use a texturing tool out here on the outside. So first thing I want to do is get this this Ron Brown's best texturing tool. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now I want to define the edges of those. the groove now see if I have enough RPM to build some friction and burn these lines in I'm just 
going to go over this with some 320, 400, and 600 because that's all I think it really needs. You can still see that nice spiraling in here. So now we can take this over to the bench and finish it. Uh, I don't want this super glossy, but I want it well protected. So I'm going to use Minwax Antique Oil on this. So now it's time to go over to the bench and start applying the finish. See, it's pretty looking good. See the spiraling? I like it. I changed my mind. I'm not going to use antique oil because I don't want this to take... If, if I was after a high gloss, I would take four or five days and use antique oil, but that's not what I'm after. I just want this to look nice and I want it to be protected. So I'm going to use wipe on poly instead because I can finish it faster and it will look about the same. This is satin and that's really all I need. It will have some gloss. This is my own mixture of wipe on poly. I took what was left of the can uh, about a three quarters of a pint and mixed it 50-50 with uh, paint thinner, mineral spirits. Which is basically all wipe on poly really is. So you can make your own cheaply enough for half the cost or less. And one of the things I like about this finish is you can reapply it after about a half hour or so. It penetrates nicely, and that's always a good thing. Wow, look at the figure in that. That's just awesome. And it's only going to take me a few coats on each side to get what I'm after. So I'll give that half hour or so to dry and I'll come back, put another coat, another half hour, I'll put another coat and that should take me about where I want to be. So I will keep doing that on this side until I'm ready to turn it over and I'll come back then. Okay, I've got about five coats on the back. I think that's going to be enough. I'll check later. I've got one coat on the front so far. I'm probably going to put two or three more before the day's out. And I will come back when I'm ready to glue my local coin in. Okay, that's three coats of wipe on poly on the front. Satin. Uh, it's still a little glossy right now, but now I'll let this dry overnight do a little buffing on it tomorrow just to even everything up and we'll glue the logo coin in and this will be done I'm actually very happy with this piece so here it is this one is done I am much happier with it now than I was before it's got a more pleasing shape to it overall and I got my logo coin glued in the bottom I, I really like it. It's a lot more functional than it was. Not as big and bulky. And, and I left 
the, the natural edge. There's no bark on it, but I like that look, that weathered look that it has. I left the sawn edges pretty much as they were. I just smoothed them up some. The spalting running through this thing is just amazing, but beautiful piece of spalted maple. <clears throat> Almost got too far in the spalting process. It was a little punky in places, but I was able to salvage it. One of the things I really like that I think are so cool is this feature right here. That oh, it, it, Seriously, it looks like a weld. And, and if you look at it and follow it down into the grain, that streak continues. I've never seen anything like that in a crotch before, but it's, it's really cool. I'm quite pleased. 